This week on Maker Update, windshield wipers with rhythm, the Arduino IDE goes pro, TensorFlow goes tiny, Bob's flip top workshop, Pi goes cyberpunk, butt joints and blow torches. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Maker Update. Hope you're all doing well. I have been staying busy trying to figure out what projects of mine I'm gonna take with me to East Bay Mini Maker Fair this Sunday. I'm gonna figure it out and it's gonna be fun. But for now, let's get started with my pick for the project of the week. Check out this car hacking project by Ian Charnas. He created a windshield wiper system where the timing of the wipers automatically synchronize to whatever music you're playing. The project is based on a Raspberry Pi linked to the car stereo system so that it can perform real-time tempo detection on the currently playing song. The next stage is to translate the tempo into power settings for the motor that will produce a synchronized result. That part really seems to be the secret sauce here since Ian went so far as to create his own variable power supplies for the wipers and mount them in the trunk of his car. It's a fun video and it really is pretty satisfying to see the wipers sync up to the music. It's one of those things where every time you use windshield wipers from now on, you'll kind of wish this was an option. Now for news, during Maker Faire Rome last weekend, Arduino made a handful of announcements. One of them was the release of a new Arduino Pro IDE. The new software is in alpha release on Windows, Mac, and Linux. There's a handful of new features including auto completion, Git integration, and a new board and library manager. There's also a classic mode that switches back to the classic look of the Arduino IDE we're familiar with. One of the most anticipated new features that's yet to be released is a debugging tool. My hacky Arduino programming skills will be excited to see that one soon, I hope. Also announced in partnership with Google is an official port of TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. Specifically, there are now examples and libraries for the Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense Board, which includes a microphone and nine axis motion sensor that the examples use for interaction. It's worth noting that Adafruit has been exploring the space for a few months now with their CircuitPython compatible boards and projects. It's going to be interesting to see how these two approaches branch off. Now for more projects on the I Like To Make Stuff channel, Bob Claggett shows how he was able to clear off a lot of the lesser used tools on his work tables by mounting them on hinged boards that flip out of the way. He makes a flip up pocket hole jig, sewing machine, scroll saw, and even a flip up bench vise. I think it's a cool idea and especially for a small workshop. On his blog, Boot Disk goes into great detail on how he was able to make this Neuromancer style cyberpunk computer deck. The heart of it is a Raspberry Pi computer, seven inch LCD, and a new compact mechanical keyboard He's also managed to shove in a software-defined radio and ham radio up converter. Continuing along with my retro tech fetish, you have to see this new tiny edition of a seven-segment clock by Daniel Sikic on Thingiverse. I featured a few of Daniel's clock designs here before, and they all have this incredible attention to detail in terms of both the design and the instruction. What makes this particular clock unique is that all of the parts were designed to be easily printed on a relatively small, 200 millimeter wide print bed. That one constraint also leads to shorter build time and fewer LEDs. In the back you have an Arduino Pro Mini and a real-time clock breakout board that make it all work. I love the way this looks and you should check out all of Daniel's other designs too. Time for a few tips and tools on Make Something. David Picciuto has a video that goes over 10 methods for making a simple butt joint, going over the pros and cons of each method. On Cool Tools, Sean Michael Reagan compares two models of propane torch heads to see which one's a better value and which one puts out more heat. He makes a wonderfully scientific testing rig and there's a clear winner in the end, but I won't spoil it. John Audio Tech has a video that goes over what he calls the true cost of multimeters. As someone who's had a string of cheap, unreliable multimeters, it's a topic that really resonates with me. He shows some of the cheap models he's been putting up with for years and how things go wrong and what to avoid. If you're into CNC mills and routers or even just love how they look sped up carving out designs, you have to check out John Riccobene's channel. His most recent video shows how he created this stunning relief map of a Mount St. Helens map. Not only is it gorgeous, but you can learn a lot about the process that goes into making something like this. For even more info on Dom, there's a great episode of the Bantam Tools podcast with him that's also worth checking out. That podcast in general is a favorite of mine. And this week I learned that Lego has started a pilot program where they will pay for you to ship them your old Lego bricks. They call it the Replay Program and the bricks are sent out to Teach for America and the Girls and Boys Club of America. If you're sitting on an old box of Legos, 
Not only will this get them to kids who can use them, but I figure it will absolve you of the sins of 3D printing for at least a few years. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this new video from Sean Hamill on getting started with DKIoT Studio. This is DigiKey's own web-based programming environment for your web-connected projects. Sean shows you how to connect up elements using the online interface and quickly build out your own cloud-based IoT project. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe to the DigiKey YouTube channel right here. You can also leave this video a thumbs up if it did something for you. You can leave me a comment if there's a particular project that you saw here that really caught your eye. You can get on the Maker Update email list. And a huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.